Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Enlightened Star Seed. My name is Nicole and welcome back if you are returning. I am shuffling cards for my pick a card readings. It's going to be a four pile pick a card reading. Now, if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload. Remember, there is no right or wrong way about doing this, guys. Just choose the pile that resonates with you the most. These are general readings. Now, this pick a card is going to be about a deep dive message, a deep soul reading. These are deep soul readings. We're going to look into your soul journey, your soul's purpose. We're going to look into your finances and career, your love life. We're going to look into your chakras. Which chakra is being activated at this time or which chakra needs healing in order to activate a certain energy that wants to come in for you, to push you forward, to bring change, a change that you've been looking for in your life. So, have you chosen yet? Great, let's get started with pile number one. Hello, pile number one, and welcome to your reading. And let's see what soul messages do we have for you today. Also, I did mention in the beginning, in the intro, of any energy drains from past relationships that you are not aware of. Where in your body are you feeling a lot of sensation? Because that is the chakra that they are attached to and siphoning your energy from. We're going to look into the chakra that will come up in your reading and we will address that. So I just want to mention that first. So. Let's get started. Trust your path. If you knew you would be supported, what would you do? Now the universe is conspiring. Keep facing your true north, as you can see here in the picture. This is you. You're walking a path and you're Facing a portal. Now, your job is not to pave the path, but to simply keep facing your true north and take one step after another, one step at a time. If you do this, you can't go wrong, pile number one. Now, the universe is conspiring. What do I mean by that? Don't waver or doubt. Use your heart as a compass and put one foot in front of the other. If you follow this invisible path of what lights you up, you will light up the world without even trying. Now, most people don't follow the call of their soul because they are waiting to see the outcome before they take the first step. If you take one baby step each day within a year, you will have taken 365 steps in your dedicated direction. Now say you want to write a book, write a page every day. If you want to change careers, do one thing every day in dedication to that. Before you know it, in just a year from now, you will look back at how far you have come 
So keep moving and open yourself up to a whole new level of support and receiving. Now, things may not work out the way you are planning or visualizing. But if you have little faith and keep showing up, they will work out even better than you could have possibly imagined. So don't micromanage the universe. Just trust your path and let your soul and your heart lead the way. Hold your vision, fixed moon. Now, I'm picking up on two interpretations with this card. The first is that you need to stand firm in whatever situation you are in. And the second is someone is feeling stuck. That could be referring to the situation that you're in or may be asking about. If that's the case, Think about what you can do to get moving, to move events forward. Are you, okay. Someone here is really being stubborn. And if so, that's great. Because if you really want things to change, here's a solution. Stop digging your heels in. Be the one to break the standstill. Stay in your power. Have faith. And patience is needed. Now, someone needs to back down. You're being too aggressive. And you're getting frustrated when things don't go your way. And someone needs to avoid stagnation. You're not making a decision to move forward. And making no decision is a decision to just stay where you are. Now, a personal relationship that has turned into a professional relationship as a team will be long lasting. Now, some of you may be a Taurus, a Leo, a Scorpio, or an Aquarius. These are fixed signs that can be stubborn. So if you have just started something, give it time, be patient. Remember that we each have all the star signs in our chart. It's just the way the astrological wheel works. So there's no judgment when I say certain signs. Number 25, clarity. Pile number one, you have attracted this card today because you are in need of some clarity. Now, the ability to experience clarity is connected to the third eye, the third eye chakra. And the more this chakra opens and is activated, the more clarity you will receive. It's time to see things clearly now, to receive the answers you have been searching for. Now, when your third eye chakra is blocked, it can affect our perception of situations in our lives. Now, you are being encouraged at this time to cleanse and work on strengthening your third eye chakra so it can work to its full potential and work for you, pile number one. There are some great meditations you can do to activate your third eye. And a very good crystal you can use to assist you with this is the amethyst crystal, which the card that started off your reading is sitting on right now. So lay down and place this crystal on your third eye and breathe in its energy to help activate and awaken this chakra. As your third eye opens, you will receive a lot more clarity in your life. Now clarity comes when we can understand and clear the confusion around stressful situations. So ask yourself, what in your life requires clearing? Now is a good time for you to take action on doing some clearing work. Sometimes our minds create illusions that stop us from seeing the truth. 
So now is a good time for you to let go of the thoughts that no longer serve you and come into a place of clarity. Once you receive this clarity, you will feel a deeper sense of self and well-being. Now, there is a particular situation that needs some clarifying in your life. Know that once you work on finding clarity and take the steps I just mentioned, the answers will come. And say this affirmation, I experience life with divine clarity. I experience life with divine clarity. Happiness. I am aware that being happy means I am on the right path. Pile number one. Before you incarnated your soul, you created a path for yourself in this physical dimension and the easiest way to this path is to follow your bliss. Life is full of choices and opportunities. When you know you are happy, you know you are on the right track. The signs are always there, but you have to acknowledge them and have the courage to follow them. So ask yourself, do you feel that you are living a life of happiness? It may be time to be truthful with yourself, with your soul self. So listen to your intuition. If there is something or a scenario holding you back from experiencing complete happiness, even though it may be painful to admit, you need to be completely truthful and honest with yourself. So be an example and be mindful of how happiness will affect every aspect of your life on your path. Also, if there is someone else in your life who needs to be brought into awareness of happiness, this is important to recognize as well, as others will want to learn from you. And whether you admit it or not, you can be their teacher. Now, when you are filled with love and compassion, not only do you bring happiness into your life, but you lead others by example. So be that light, pile number one. Be the light. Also, the dolphins represented here along your path are representing your spirit guides that are guiding you and helping you along your path path along your journey. So you do have assistance here, pile number one. That's your journey. They're helping you go through that portal. So be aware of the messages that you're receiving. So listen to the promptings of your intuition, of your heart. Author, you have a book inside of you that wishes to be expressed. Make the time to write it. In the beginning of your reading pile number one, I did mention about someone writing a book to write one page at a time and taking steps each day towards your destination in writing this book. To write one page a day and by the end of the year you would have 365 pages. Some of you have gone through experiences that are just out of this world. Some of you have come into your gifts and talents and want to express and talk about this and let others know that there is hope and miracles do happen. You're being called to write this book. For a long time, you have thought of writing this book. And this card is a signal that the time is now, pile number one. This endeavor is part of your life purpose. You are divinely guided to write this book. You are being supported by guides to write this book. Although you may not have a fully formed concept in your mind, find that publisher or hire an editor. The main point is to write and write now. 
So tap into the divine infinite wisdom while writing, which will help you better hear the voice of your guides and angels. So don't think that you need to retire in order to have the hours to devote to writing. Remember, if you finish just one page a day in a year, you will have produced a 365-page book, like I was saying in the beginning. This is a sure sign for some of you that are being prompted to write about your experience to help and guide others. Release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. Okay, some of you need to release your ex because this is holding you back. This is causing some kind of blockage. And the time is now. Now, here's my advice. Go no contact. Get rid of your ex's old stuff to remove their presence. Cut all ties by blocking them on social media and on your phone so that you two can't contact one another. Go around your home and remove any photos of you and your ex. Fill a box with any gifts they've given you or trinkets that remind you of them. Put all of them in storage or throw it away or cash it in. Now, this will cut any physical and emotional connections you two may still have towards each other. Now, all that's left is their energy. Then after that, take a shower or a bath to clean your body and wash away any bad vibes. And let's move on. The situation will improve. Yes, pile number one. Your angels want you to know that they are aware that things look difficult right now. However, the situation is going to improve. It may take some time and there will most likely be some hard work ahead of you. But the effort you put forth will be worth it. And things are going to get better. Now is not the time to give up and throw in the towel. There is still hope for the future. Take heart and continue to work hard towards your desired outcome. And if you look closely into the picture, pile number one, there are your guides, your spirit guides, the dolphins. Again, they are with you, guiding you, guiding you to your happiness, your bliss, guiding you every step of the way. From my singles, you will be guided to a new partner, a new relationship that is more aligned to your spiritual path. So trust and believe that things will improve. Dust Devil, moving out of stagnation. Some of you are just going to embrace the chaos. Others of you are going to trust the process. And some of you are moving out of stagnation. Some people are afraid of the chaos, believing that it's intentionally happening to you, to stir things up, to throw you off your path. But the truth is, you can't expect things to go exactly the way you want. Sometimes things have to go off course in order for you to either learn a lesson or see something that you have turned a blind eye to or something that needs to catch your awareness. Whatever it is, you're being called to engage in the full cyclone of life, the craziness, the upheavals, now, this represents two aspects of you right now, pile number one. Know that for some of you, life is appearing to throw you off course, where you assume the world is coming at you or happening to you. 
know this is happening to help you escape some invisible shackles, invisible chains that are holding you hostage, holding you down, keeping you back from moving out of stagnation. For someone, this is an ex that you're finally getting rid of. You are moving forward. You're leaving the dust behind. You're cleaning up the mess and moving it out. And this was affecting your third eye chakra. They were gaslighting you, manipulating you. This may have caused you to self-sabotage. If you found yourself drained, sad, down, after conversations, or around certain people, well, there you go. Put your foot down and cut the cords. Have a backbone and really cut this person off. Some of you need to stop asking for things to be so perfect and stop being hard on yourself and beating up on yourself. Know that the awkwardness, the messiness, the confliction, and the wildness of it all is how you shift. Trust in this process. This is the only way for you to learn and grow and be more aware of your surroundings. Trust and believe that you will know what you need and when you need it. Once things are settled, you will discover the wisdom and the gems that are waiting for you ahead. And let's get one final message. Journey. To enjoy the journey, let go of the outcome. Pile number one, this is what it's all about. When you are trying to improve your life that is already great, know that the journey matters more than the outcome because it gives yourself permission to be happy. Happiness is in letting go of the outcome. And then and only then will you find your happiness. Also, you need healing in your sacral chakra, also known as your sex chakra. Pick up the crystal red aventurine and place it on your sacral chakra. And do some sacral chakra healing with some healing meditation. You can find it on YouTube. Just type in sacral chakra healing meditation. And you'll come into a meditative mind of healing in this area. They have several on YouTube, so check it out. And that's what I have for pile number one. If it resonates, leave me a comment. I'm bringing you lots of love and light. Take care. Hello, pile number two. And welcome to your reading. First, I want to say that any energy drains from your past may come up in your chakras, and we're going to look into that if they come up in your reading. Where in your body are you feeling a lot of sensation? Because that is the chakra that we're going to be looking into. First up, keepers of the earth. You are not alone. Ancient ancestors stand beside you. Pile number two. You are so supported. You are definitely not alone. You have wonderful helpers supporting you who are here to help you every step of the way. So call upon your past loved ones and ancestors for assistance. They are willing and ready to come in for you. Now, they acknowledge the work that you have been doing already and are ready to work through you. For some of you, your past loved ones passed on certain things that you are devoted to. You've been working very hard, and they want to thank you for wanting to stand for them, to devote your life to doing things in a unique way. Now is the time to increase your capacity to receive support 
in this physical world. This can come in the form of financial abundance, acts of service from strangers or people coming in to help you and your work. It's different for all of you. The only thing that is stopping you right now is your capacity to receive support. You deserve to be rewarded for the work that you are doing. You do not need to go at it alone. Call upon your ancestors and past loved ones to help you on your mission, on your life mission. Ask yourself, what kind of support do you need? Call it in right away. And say this affirmation, I am open to receiving a whole new level of support for my life and my work, and I call it in now. Make sure to include any specific request now and say thank you, thank you, thank you. This would work well, pile number two. For some of you, you have animal spirit guides surrounding you you are a lover of nature. Some of you are already calling in your guides to work with you. You know that you are not alone. You are communicating and channeling. Beautiful. You're very close to achieving your goal. Gibbous moon. And pulling this card at any time of the month suggests that the situation you're asking about is bulging with possibility and coming to a peak. But this isn't an ending card with a yes or no answer. Rather, you're being reminded that some adjustments may be required here before you get what you want though you're certainly on the right track here, which I hope is reassuring to you. However, there is also a sense that your situation is a bit tense. So don't push too hard. You know, it's like one false move and the whole thing can blow or come tumbling down. Now, this is not meant to scare you. It's just to let you know there's a fuse attached to this situation. So be careful. Always keep a positive frame of mind. Always speak positive words. I know I'm on the right track. I know I'm on the right track. So now is a good time to review your plans. Review your next move. And keep the momentum going as you move towards your dreams and your goals and stay focused. For some of you, now is the time to start that new project. And someone needs to hear this. You need to get back into good health habits. Let go of the sugar. That's enough. Now, about this gibbous moon, it comes at the very end of the lunar cycle, just before the full moon. Luna looks like she's bulging because she's almost a full moon, so she's nearly fully rounded. It's the accumulation of the waxing cycle. So this tends to be rather an intense period of the month, no matter when you receive this card. So this can be a very ripe time, a sensitive time and a very ripe situation, sensitive situation. Next card. I am presence. Pile number two. Connect with your I am presence at a deeper level. Just like each of us have angels and spirit guides, like I was saying in the beginning, that you are not alone, that your past loved ones and ancestors are with you, that walk with us in the higher realms. We also have an aspect of ourselves that resonates in this higher state of consciousness. The I am is the all-loving, all-knowing, 
all wise aspect of yourself that holds profound guidance and wisdom at all times. It resonates pure love and healing energy, and is the angelic and divine aspect of your soul. So use the I am presence, especially during meditation. You will receive downloads of information and guidance through your crown chakra. Next card, number four, grounding. Pile number two, you're being called to ground your energy, and you have a lot of cards in your reading so far that is showing that you are being called to ground your energy. Now, you may have been feeling a little scattered in your thoughts and feelings and finding it difficult to focus and concentrate. Maybe you are feeling stressed and busy due to the many demands on you and are finding it difficult to create and manifest positive outcomes and experiences into your life. So again, know that you are not alone. This is a very common feeling and it is easy to get caught up in the whirlwind and craziness that surrounds you. There is a light at the end of the tunnel for you, pile number two. And the best thing for you right now is to get centered and grounded. Know, pile number two, that grounding your energy in Mother Earth, taking salt baths, is the key to you being balanced. So you're not going through the up and down roller coaster ride of emotions. Staying grounded is staying centered and balanced at all times. Grounding is the key. The most powerful way to do this is to align and reconnect with beautiful Mother Earth on a daily basis. You are encouraged to take some time in nature to connect and receive the abundant energy and magic that she has to share. Now, this is the best medicine for your soul right now. So spend some time at the beach or go for a walk in the park or visit a lovely lake or your favorite place in nature where you feel at peace. Sit on the land and feel yourself completely grounded and centered. When you are grounded, you feel a deep connection to yourself and everything around you. The number four stands for stability, power, protection, logic, realization, and reason. So with this grounding, that's roots. That's your root chakra, your base chakra. And say this affirmation. My energy is completely grounded into the healing energy of Mother Earth. Next. Notice this is your third chakra card, pile number two. I usually just pull one card, but Spirit wanted you to get more of the chakra cards here. Number 20, play. This is a reminder, pile number two, to bring more play into your world. We already know that life may have been getting you down and the worry of your day-to-day -day commitments may be causing you stress. We already spoke about grounding and one of the most powerful ways to release tension and worries of the world is to take some time to play and feel joyful. Life can become so intense and serious we forget to play. Now, it is time to connect with this joyful aspect of yourself and embrace this side of you. Ask yourself, when was the last time you played? So, you may like to take your dog to the park or, like I was saying, go to the beach or play a game of sports with friends, or whatever it is. Being playful is a gift. 
to yourself. It is very important for your growth at this time to allow this energy to come in and cleanse your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. Now, it is natural to play and have fun. Playfulness is a powerful medicine for the soul, and it brings in a deep release, a deep healing of stale energies and worries of the mind. So bring more play into your life. Today, and the number 20 indicates that good things are coming your way. And say this affirmation, I play joyfully in the magic of the universe, and I am free to be me. And there's a lot of green here, green and blues. That's your heart chakra, your throat chakra. Determination, another chakra card, pile number two. Here we go. There's a lot of emotion in these cards. You're determined, pile number two, you're determined to persevere. This is a reminder of how important it is to be determined. Everything at some point requires that extra energy, that extra push to get to the next stage of your creation or whatever it is or situation that you may be going through. Determination and will are the keys to amplify your desire. You may have been working hard on a certain project and it may have come to a standstill. You may have doubts and the negative thoughts may be casting a shadow on your dreams. It is time to get focused, pile number two, and be more determined than ever. Nothing in this world can take this dream from you. So allow that fire that you have within you and bring in this energy that is required to move to the next stage of your manifestation. It's time to be focused and clear on your outcome. So ask yourself, what is it that you would like to create? What are your desires? You are the only one to make this happen. And it is important to keep your eye on the goal. Don't let it go. Do what needs to be done to make it happen. And when you feel like all the odds are against you and you want to give up, know that you have the determination to succeed. Now, this powerful energy lives inside of you and is ready and waiting for you to surrender to its calling. So call forth the power of determination and bring it into alignment with your dreams and desires. Now, it's truly amazing what you can achieve when you put your mind to something and apply determination. So it is time for you to be a champion and go for what you desire. And the number 16 represents independence, leadership, and service to others. And say this affirmation, I am an unstoppable being of love and determination. Next card. Self-esteem. I possess gifts of the soul that benefit me and others. Now, it is easy to perceive others as being better than you, but know this is all the ego. It's an ego trap. There is no one greater or lesser than you. There are only those who have learned how to reveal their gifts and talents. Everyone is born with unique gifts of the soul. No two are alike. You have a unique gift to share with the world. And you want to put your stamp on it. And perhaps you may not be aware or even in tune with your incredible gifted self. So why not try to make a list of 10 great aspects of yourself, your abilities, your gifts and talents that you possess, that you love. It is not always easy to write about yourself. 
But sometimes you need to remind yourself just how special you are. Remember that you did not come down to this world by accident. You came here to learn. This world is a classroom, and we're all here to learn. Know you are like a treasure chest of incredible gifts and insights. So now is the time, pile number two, to celebrate you. Next card. Teaching. You inspire young people to learn. Speaking of this world being a classroom, pile number two, you are going to be teaching others how to raise their vibration, how to be successful, how to achieve their dreams and goals. You're going to teach others how to accomplish this goal. You're going to be a mentor to others. You have a gift. And this is part of your life purpose, to help and support others. People will respond to you more than ever before. People need trustworthy and loving people like you to act as a shepherd, a guide, a teacher, a mentor. Now, you will be drawn to this in the future, pile number two. So teach others how to quiet their minds and ground their energy and raise their self-esteem. Teach others to manifest their dreams and goals. You're powerful, pile number two. Most likely, pile number two, your teaching or healing work with others will have some aspect of spirituality. For instance, you may incorporate music. You may incorporate personal growth and lessons that you have gone through in life. For some of you, you may have an online course that you offer to others or a class that you offer within your community. Or you may be teaching life skills in other ways. It's different for all of you. For example, some of you may be a coach, a musical instructor, or an art therapist, a Reiki healer, or through charity work or running a youth center. It's different for all of you. In these ways, you can help others keep their spiritual gifts alive and awaken new interest. If you ask the angels and your guides to help you to the best avenues that will allow you to reach out and teach others, guide others, mentor others, they will be happy to help with this very important life purpose. Religious factors. Your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. For some of you, you're already in a relationship with someone who is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. And together, you can be this power couple working together. For others, this card is saying that religion and spirituality are important factors in your love life. This card is coming to you as guidance to seek your new partner at church, temple, or meeting places associated with your faith. If you're currently with a partner who isn't spiritually minded or whose beliefs differ from your own, you may feel dissatisfied. You may also be influenced by family traditions that expect you to marry within your own culture or religion. For others, you may want to ask for help with this issue. Just remain true to yourself during this process. Decide which factors you will and won't accept in your relationship and what your priorities are for your partner. For instance, 
It's possible that your love interest may live the spiritual principles that you find important, like forgiveness, charity, and kindness, without having the same religious affiliation as you do. Your ancestors, angels, guides, and past loved ones wants to remind you that your partner, like everyone, is a holy child of God. Everyone is spiritual in truth because everyone is spirit. Although it's not up to you to change your partner to match your spiritual path, your affirmations, prayers, and visualizations have a positive influence on both of you and your relationship. Next card. Ask for help from others. Okay, so pile number two, you will be asking others for help with certain situations. Now, it's not necessary to do everything on your own. Your angels are asking you to reach out to those around you for assistance. And by allowing others to lend a hand, you greatly increase your chances for success. And your plans will begin to move forward more freely. And know that the help that you receive may also include important information provided by knowledgeable individuals. Now, the stress of doing too much can create both physical and emotional health challenges for you. So surround yourself with loving friends and family who are willing and able to lighten your load. And you'll begin to feel much better. Next card. Number 20. Feast of Plenty. Choices and their consequences. And with the B here, it shows you're going to be quite busy. These choices can be several things that you may be learning from. You have options, choices, choices to make and their consequences. Also, you have life's blessings. Now, you are faced with plenty of options right now. And while that may seem to be an extraordinary thing, too many choices can throw you off balance. You might be worried that once you commit to something, you won't be able to turn back. Or you may refuse to confront the consequences of your decisions. The most important thing to realize is that by offering your experiences, no amount of overanalyzing or strategizing will help you make the right choice. Don't debate whether it's right or wrong. Instead, just choose. In choosing is finding experience, and that is what is necessary here. Right or wrong, what matters is the experience that you gain until you digest it all. Only one warning, avoid the same choice. If something didn't feel good or does not bring you what it seemingly promised, do not choose it again and again. The experience will only repeat itself, and you will have more than a bad taste in your mouth. Now, the experience is yours to enjoy. You can always go back for more when you are, let's say, hungry again. Life blessings are always available to you, pile number two. They're always calling your name. And number 20 means that you are not alone. It's a sign that your angels are with you, and they are trying to communicate with you. As we said in the beginning, with the Keepers of the Earth card, you are not alone. Ancient ancestors stand beside you. Twenty is also a master number, meaning a lot of power and potential. So now let's get a lasting message. For pile number two, security. To feel more secure, deepen your connection with nature. Root chakra, 
you may want to try using a crystal coil garnet. Now, you also have the grounding card, which is associated with your root chakra. Now, your first card, Keepers of the Earth, shows you are connected to nature. You have the grounding card, which is associated with your root chakra. So this is where in your body you're feeling a lot of sensation because that is a chakra that is attached to anything that is pulling on your energy. So if it's your root chakra, it's affecting your abundance, your stability. There is no better way to feel more grounded than by taking your shoes and socks off and walking bare feet on the grass or a sandy beach. Grounding is also a way your body maintains good health, stability, and balance. There are many other ways to practice grounding. Or lean up and hug a tree. Or try gardening. Connecting with Mother Earth will make you feel a security, well-grounded. And you have the grounding card here, pile number two. This is important to you. And that's what I have for pile number two. If it resonates, leave me a comment. And I'm sending you lots of love and light. Take care. Hello, pile number three. And welcome to your reading. We're going to... We're going to look into any energy drains from the past that you are not aware of. Where in your body are you feeling a lot of sensation? Because that is a chakra that is attached to something pulling on your energy. First card. You're already doing it. Stop overthinking. Keep facing your true north. Well, I guess that's the end of your reading, pile number three. You're already doing it. <laughs> so don't question things so much. This is saying do not question things so much. You're on the right track. You are facing the right way. Stop overthinking it. It's happening. And you're closer than you think. You are exactly where you need to be. And things are moving at the perfect speed. So do not rush it. Now is not the time to be impatient. Now is the time to walk steady. There is no need to rush. What you are building is being built. What you have planted soon will blossom. With every day, a new accomplishment is being made. You have come a long way. The foundations are steady. Now all that is needed is for you to trust and keep walking forward. If you're overthinking that things should be moving faster, know that it is just your ego comparing yourself to someone else. Comparison is not your friend. So stay in your lane and water your own garden. And know that your time to blossom will come soon, very soon. And you're already doing it. So keep on doing it, pile number three. Next card. Surrender to the divine. Full moon. Your life is coming to a head. A turning point. There may be some kind of change going on and possibly even some sort of emotional explosion happening. So tune into your emotions now and see what they are telling you. More than likely, you're very close to your destination, to what you want to manifest, no matter when in the moon cycle you're receiving this card. It's like when a woman is pregnant and She's coming towards the end of her pregnancy and she's going through the labor pains. Meaning, you soon will find out 
whether or not your wishes are going to come true. Now, the odds are in your favor, pile number three, as this is a positive card. But you may need to work harder than usual to keep your cool as events unfold. Just keep telling yourself, I'm getting the answers I need. I'm getting the answers I need. Now, a wish you made may be about to come true. Know that it's make or break time. There may be a sense of some madness going on in the air. So breathe deeply and stay calm. You may need to forgive someone to release some negative energy. For some of you, it's time to let go of the past and move on. Now the full moon marks the end of the lunar cycle, making this card something of a power card. The full moon is often the time when answers to questions you may have asked during the new moon. And pulling this card at any time of the lunar cycle is suggesting answers will soon be coming your way. Next card. The energy is gaining momentum. You have another moonology card here. Waxing moon. Pile number three. This is a very positive card, indicating that you can create the reality you are dreaming of, though it will take some work and you're not quite there yet. This is a time of energies that are rising up. Emotions are building too, as I was saying. Where do you want to go? And do you believe that you can get there? Either you can just keep meditating and focusing on your desired outcome, or you can make the courageous commitment to take more practical steps towards your goals. Whichever you decide, pile number three, you are most certainly on the right track. Just keep saying, I know I'm headed in the right direction. I know I am headed in the right direction. Now, your situation is full of potential. Your dreams can come true. For some of you, more effort is required. Are you willing to give it? Some of you need to review your goals, and are you sure you're still committed? So keep moving forward. Now, the waxing cycle is the period of the lunar cycle, from new moon to full moon. And during this time, the moon appears to be slightly bigger and rounder every night. This is very empowered and empowering time. And this is a very promising card, like I said. It suggests now is the time to make plans and to act on them, no matter when you actually receive this card. Next card, look, another Moonology card. A time to give rather than take. New Moon in Virgo. Some of you can be a Virgo. This card is more for those of you that need to put more of an effort. And are you willing to give it? Know that it's time for you to take stock of your situation. Where are you? And where do you want to go? Some of you need to do a restart. And this Virgo energy is suggesting you make that restart a clear one. That's simple and well organized this time. Virgo also has a strong health aspect to it. So if you've been unwell through all of this, know that your health will improve. Just make sure you're eating clean, and have alternative therapeutic methods. So add these to your routines. Now, however you've been feeling, if a situation is blocked at the moment, it could be that you're overthinking things or being too critical. It's a time for you to not ask what someone else can do for you, but 
to think more about what you can do for others. So stay committed to healthy morning and evening routines. Know that gradual improvements are coming. And pay attention to detail if you want success. Be of service to others and love and money will flow. Okay, this is for someone. The person you're asking about is reliable. Some of you, someone is holding back because they're, 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 they're not sure about someone. The person you're, okay, no, the person you're asking about is reliable. Number 22, life purpose. Pile number three, you're stepping into your life purpose. Your life purpose is a calling for you. It is a perfect time for you, pile number three, to manifest your life purpose. It is your birthright to walk your path with purpose. And now is the time for you to manifest your path into reality. Some of you are already walking your path. So for those of you who don't know, ask yourself, what is your life purpose? Know that we are all made of divine love. And we are here to express love into reality. So then it would only make sense that your life purpose is to do what you love. To do and share it with the world. So take a moment to ask yourself, what is it that you love to do that brings your heart joy? Sometimes there is a fear or resistance around your life purpose or what you love to do. Fears such as rejection, failure, not earning enough money, even a fear of success. Now, fear is a natural part of the process of stepping out of your comfort zone and is often created when you hold yourself back. If you are waiting for the fear to subside before you even start to do what it is that you love, you could be waiting forever. So just feel the fear and do it anyway. It is time for your life purpose and to shine your light upon the world. And with the blue around the border, this is referring to your throat chakra. A lot of you want to come forward and be a speaker, a motivational coach, a mentor, or simply speak your truth or have some sort of platform that you speak to others and give encouragement and enlightenment. For some of you, if you're going through any energy drains from a past relationship, a current relationship, a current situation, a past situation, where in your body are you feeling a lot of sensation? Because that is the chakra that is attached to a situation that is pulling your energy. The throat chakra came up. So if it's your throat chakra, the situation or past relationship, past or current relationship, is blinding you from the truth, not allowing you to express yourself. Know that this may be causing you to self-sabotage if you find yourself drained and sad down after conversations with this person or around a certain people or situations. Well, there you go. Put your foot down, cut the cords, get the healing needed for that chakra, and have a backbone, and really cut these people off. Also, number 22 is a master number, which means it carries additional spiritual power. This number is a sign of good luck or of positive things to come. So if you keep seeing 22, it could be a message for you from your angels, from your spirit guides, that they are helping you to manifest your dreams into reality. Know that when you step forward onto your path, miracles do happen. Unexpected doors open and opportunities you could never imagine start to come your way. And when you decide to live your life purpose, 
and walk your own path, the universe is there to meet you with an abundance of blessings. So receiving this card also indicates that you're already walking your life path. As indicated from your first card here, pile number three, from a completely different deck, that you're already doing it. Now, it will not always be easy. So hold on and make sure you enjoy the journey. And say this affirmation, I am in divine alignment and living my life purpose. Always say that to yourself. When you're in meditation, say this to yourself a few times. I am in divine alignment and living my life purpose. Humor. I choose to focus on the lighter side of life. I was just saying, things aren't always going to be easy. But choose to enjoy your journey. Now, there are definitely parts of life that require your serious attention. But you have to learn to have fun. Don't neglect things that bring you joy or make you laugh. Having a sense of humor is also good for your mental and physical body. Being in a state of love and joy. So seek out people who make you feel good about being alive. Avoid criticism and gossip. Always look at your cup as being half full instead of half empty. And be careful of the endless mind chatter of this physical dimension. It can seep into your conscious mind. So do your best to listen to happy music. Read soul-nurturing books. And be wary of movies or TV shows that can darken your mood. Always remember, happy people attract happy people. So always choose to focus on the lighter side of life. Travel. Your life purpose involves traveling. There we go with that life purpose again. Now, pile number three, you've received this card as validation of what you already know, that you're already doing it. Now, you may be called to be of service in faraway places, or it could be that a life-changing traveling experience will give you a breakthrough of information about your divine purpose. Some of you may be well-known even famous, like traveling on tour. You bring blessings wherever you go. For some of you, this is talking about movement in your life. To look at life adventurous and life-changing, this is occurring for you now and in the immediate future. And by letting go of the old and surrendering to the divine, with the full moon card, and stepping into these changes, you gain a sense of meaning and fulfillment. Know that the former stagnation or fear that was holding you back is replaced with a passion for new projects and new relationships. For others, this card is saying that your life purpose involves technology of some sort, especially in respect to computers and telecommunication. This can be where you're working from home, on your computer, like me having a YouTube channel. Either way, your life purpose involves people hearing and seeing you from all over the world. Next card. Chemistry. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. For those of you that are single, when you're traveling, you may meet someone that has a lot of chemistry with you. It happens when people feel a strong physical attraction or emotion or emotional connection with someone else. Now, this magnetic attraction is different from normal everyday feelings of attraction 
because it can be stronger and last a lot longer. For those of you who are already in a relationship, this means that the feeling between you and your partner is going to get stronger and stronger as you both walk together into your life purpose. Next card. Unlikely. Ugh, I was just hoping it would have been smooth sailing here. Pile number three. You need to surrender to the divine in order for things to take place. If you stay in your fear, things are unlikely to happen and move forward and be successful and meet someone new. The situation you have been asking about is unlikely to occur as you imagined it. You're not letting go of something, a situation. Some of you are refusing to answer the call and step into your life purpose. Now there will be different versions of events that will take place for all of you. If you feel you're already doing it, then there's something else that you may need to let go of. Some sort of forgiveness, surrendering to the divine, knowing that you're worthy, letting go of fear, or maybe you just need to lighten up and enjoy your journey, whichever the case is for you. Know that you need to move forward for your manifestation, your dreams, your goals to occur. And it's unlikely to happen if you don't move forward. Or it may be that what you've asked about is simply not in your highest, greatest good. Maybe you need to focus on Another alternative of possibilities. Open your eyes to different opportunities. Be more willing to experience a unique and more uplifting outcome than what you have planned for yourself. Next card. Dream Thief. Refuse... Refusal of the call, just like I was saying, some of you are refusing to heed the call. And it's all because you want to stay in your comfort zone and stay in the sameness. You know, I don't see these cards before the reading. I just shuffle them and spirit picks them out and I put them in piles. So I'm going along the reading with you. Do you want to just stay where you are and to tell the same old stories over and over again and know that you will not evolve beyond them? So ask yourself whether you are reverting back to the familiar old stories of why you were wounded in the past or rejected by someone or Things didn't work out the way you wanted, so you decided to pull back. Or do you talk about yourself in a negative way, defeated way? Staying in your comfort zone will never allow you to move into new adventures of life, to move forward in your life purpose. Instead, bring into mind how you've already changed. You have new stories to tell, to rely and build upon. Now, do you want to move beyond this barrier you have set for yourself? This box that you've placed yourself in? Now, this is only for those who refuse to answer the call and step into their life purpose. And you can. It's not difficult. A new adventure, a new life. It's like learning how to drive. At first, you're terrified, and next thing you know, after a few lessons, you're flying around the corner. And drop your resistance, and show your potential, and wake up, and move forward. You are so much more than you know. Now is the time to express what has been dormant within your soul, and you know that your new adventure has already begun because you're already doing it. So answer the call. 
Wow, that was deep. Now let's get a lasting message for my pile number three. The only illusion is separation. Chakra balance, unity. Okay, pile number three, you should get a chakra alignment, like some Reiki. An illusion is something that appears to be real, but is actually not real. The illusion of separation is a belief that we are separate from each other and from the divine. We think we are separate from the creator, the divine, and each other. What we think directly influences how we feel. How we feel influences how our bodies react. How our bodies react influence how we behave. How we behave defines who we are and what we experience in life. To fully comprehend how the illusion of separation manifests in our physical reality and its influences on how we live our lives, we first need to understand the link between our thoughts, our emotions, and behavior and bring it all into alignment and learn to control our thoughts and emotions and behavior and that's what I have for pile number three I surely enjoyed your reading and if this resonates leave me a comment below and I'm sending you lots of love and light take care Hello, pile number four, and welcome to your reading. Let's dive right in. But first, I wanted to speak to you about energy drains. What is draining your energy? Is it something from your past, past relationship, past situation, or even a current relationship or situation? Where in your body are you feeling a lot of sensation? Because that is the chakra we're going to be looking into today. The chakra that is attached to something that is siphoning and pulling on your energy. And this may be causing you to self-sabotage. If you find yourself drained, sad, down, after conversations or around certain people, well, there you go. So... It's time to put your foot down and cut the cords, have a backbone, and really cut these people off. First card, the age of light. You've been training for this for lifetimes. There is no mistake, pile number four, that you are supposed to be here. At this time of ascension, of this great time of change, you may have been feeling like you're unprepared for your path ahead, your path that is calling you. But know that you've been training for this for lifetimes. All of your past lifetimes, all of your past experiences has prepared your soul into this most magnificent expression that is your authentic self. And know, pile number four, that you're unique. And you came into this physical world with a clear soul plan. You came in with wisdom beyond your years. This is the part of you that longs to be seen. This is the part of you that is ready to step forward and be heard. You're ready to emerge. This is not the lifetime to stay hidden behind doors, behind the curtains, behind the blinds, but to step forth and be seen and rise to your calling. And say this affirmation, I call forth the soul gifts and soul training that I have required throughout all of my lifetimes. I am ready to embody them all. Now, without hesitation and without fear, 
I have been training for this for lifetimes. Say this affirmation, it's an activation affirmation, several times every day. Practice in your mind what you want to be and what you want to say. Practice. Practice what you want to do and be and say. Next card. Meditate and contemplate. New moon in Pisces. Some of you can be a Pisces. This card indicates a new start coming your way that's connected to a matter that leaves you feeling somewhere between having your head in the clouds and being in a totally altered state. Now, there could be confusion and disappointment if that's what you have gone through recently and if that's what you're expecting. However, if you're on to a good thing, then wish hard because the words of your soul and your heart could help bring in manifestations, manifestations of your dreams. Some of you are making a last ditch effort, a chance to make your dreams come true after a lot of disappointments. Use your feelings to guide your way. Logic won't work this time. Some of you are really facing your fears that have been holding you back. For others, you're receiving healing after a situation. For some of you, it's time to surrender to the divine. Now is the time. Surrender. Surrender everything, the things that you regret, your disappointments, your control. Surrender to the divine. For others, you need to avoid being deceptive or trying to do things in a shortcut way. For some of you, you're willingly being deceived because you refuse to speak up. Now, Pisces is the sign of mysteries, of emotion, usually hopeless romantics. It is a sign of water and the unconscious mind. Its energy is deep like the depths of water. And the new moon in Pisces indicates a time to listen to your feelings and allow your emotions to flow freely. Next card. Number 28. Visualization. You have received this card because this is a creative time of visualization for you in your life. It's a tool for manifesting your desires and dreams and a powerful way for you to receive visions and messages from the spirit world. When you visualize and activate your third eye chakra and you're currently expanding and awakening, you need to practice exercises that enhance this process, such as meditation and breath work. Now, you already received the Meditate and Contemplate New Moon in Pisces card. So it's really being brought to your attention to meditate on your third eye. The color of the third eye chakra is a violet color. So imagine this color streaming into your third eye as it expands and awakens to its full potential. Now, when it opens, you will receive a strong vision. So trust what is coming through for you. You will also deepen your intuition and psychic abilities. You will be receiving strong signs and messages from your guides and from the spirit world. Now, it is important, pile number four, that you slow down for a moment and go within to see what you are being shown. So pay attention you are in a phase of creating. Even though you say, you know what, that's it, I'm, I'm throwing in the towel, I'm done. You pick it up and go right back again. And you're in this phase of creating. So visualize strongly what you would like to manifest into your world. This is a very exciting time for you. 
And pile number four, whenever spirit puts an idea into your head, don't sit on it, don't question it, write it down, work on it immediately. Don't chuck it to the side and say you'll get to it later because then you lose a lot of the intuitive downloads and information. And say this affirmation. I love affirmations. My third eye is open and I have profound vision. My third eye is open and I have profound vision. And if you have been going through any energy drains from any past relationships or situation, any present relationship or situation, notice where in your body are you feeling a lot of sensation and the third eye chakra came up because that is the chakra that is being affected, that is attached to a situation pulling your energy. Know that this effect on your third eye was due to the fact that they were gaslighting you and manipulating you. And the number 28 is a message from your guides and angels that you are on the right path. Things are going well for you and you are and will be achieving your goal. So keep up the hard work. Now these numbers often appear when you're making positive changes. So remain positive. Next card. Health, I will honor the physical vessel that enshrines my soul. Now, your body is your temple, and you are responsible for its care. Believe it or not, you have chosen to incarnate in this physical dimension, in this world, to learn certain lessons. And if you don't maintain your physical vessel, that your soul has chosen, then you are sabotaging your own plan. And we spoke about things that you're probably going through in life that can cause this self-sabotage. Do not let people or situations throw you off your path. Your health is a vital element for your soul's progress, and you should never take it for granted. So. Be sensible about nourishment and exercise, especially at this time. You are a sensitive soul and you must be conscious of your surroundings because you can easily be drained by people, places, and things. So, so always do a cleansing ritual of protection or just bring your mind and body back to your heart throughout the day just to rejuvenate yourself and get focused. Next card. Crystals. Your connection to crystals and gemstones is a channel for healing energy. There we have that healing again. Now, this card is a signal for you to dive more deeply into your understanding of crystals. They're calling you to work with them as part of your life purpose. Now, these crystals will help amplify and direct the divine healing energy to yourself, to parts of you that needs healing and healing energy to people, even animals and your environment or any situation happening around you. So look into crystals to help you use them while you meditate also, pile number four. Next card. Separation. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. Pile number four. This is referring to the energy drains from a past relationship or current relationship or situation that I was talking about. And it may be affecting your health, your body, your energy. Your third eye chakra came up and that indicates that this person was manipulating you or a time in your life when you're single and preparing for your next relationship. 
call upon the angels for support and guidance during this transition. They can help you discover the deep healing to be done as you spend time alone. And the crystal card came into your reading that is to help support you with your healing as you move forward, which prepares you for the next part of your relationship journey with someone more compatible. That this is for those of you that are going through this. And time apart is needed for you to gain focus on what it is that you have to do here, pile number four. You're no longer in alignment with this person. And this is your sign to move on for clarity to come in so you can move forward and align with someone more compatible for you. Next card. Yes, the answer is yes. You will meet someone else, pile number four. Yes to someone that will be more in aligned with who you are and, and who you're becoming. For those of you that resonate with the situation and any other questions that you may have relating to what you're pursuing in your life at this moment, the answer to your question is yes. Next card. Opportunity. We have another angel card here, and your angel surely wants you to know that they are sending you an opportunity here. So listen up. Positive growth and expansion is on the horizon for you. Now, this opportunity may bring a lot of inspiration and insights, or it could be the chance you've been waiting for to take action on your idea that you already have. Now, they know that you're trying to manifest the chance to create changes in your career, buy or sell a home, or bring romance into your life, positive romance. Whatever your desires, your angels are about to open a door of possibilities for you. So make sure you step right through it. And I see a lot of abundance coming your way here. A lot of abundance. So be ready. Pile number four. Number 26, gathering around the power of community. Know that you are safe and protected going through this transition and allow help from your community. Now, there are times when you need positive reinforcements from others. Perhaps your journey may have made you tired just before reaching your powerful finish where you have past loved ones waiting to cheer you on. Know this, pile number four. Know this. You are never alone. You are not alone. Regardless of whether you think you are, your past loved ones and guides are gathering around to help you with your next step. As you bring your powerful visions into life, there has never been another you before. You are unique and you have a unique relationship with your friends and family, community, and all those who gather and help you in the unseen realms. Yes, your past loved ones are cheering you on and helping you in the unseen realms. So now is the time to allow assistance from others. Ask for it and trust that you will receive and know that you are safe and secure right now in this movement. Truly supported in your beautiful, amazing, yet complicated life. You are heard by your angels. You are heard by the divine and your loved ones. And know that you are loved, yes, loved, now and always by life itself. 
Whatever your question, you will find the help you need to achieve what you desire. And you will not have to do it alone. Count on it. And number 26 is all about unconditional love. Being patient while going through trials and tribulations. And finally facing life head on when it's presented to you. So know that when you are able to master all of these things, your positive energy will increase. Let's get a lasting message for my pile number four. Creativity. Use creativity to transform your pain into positivity. I was just saying positive energy, and throat chakra, ammonazite. And you may want to pick up a crystal called ammonazite that will help you with your throat chakra and speaking your truth. With your situation here, pile number four, now you may fear that if you allow yourself to feel your painful emotions, they might never end. No, what you resist persists until you finally turn and face it with courage. And there is always an end. Know that emotions will unfreeze, move, and change on their own natural accord when you are determined to make the effort to keep your heart open to yourself. Repressing your emotions, on the other hand, will leave you feeling numb, tired, and often disconnected in significant physical pain and facing a painful feeling with loving acceptance builds your spirituality and releases your body from having to work so hard to keep your emotions stuffed down. Also, tense emotions such as fear, anger, sadness, and loneliness contains large amounts of force. When you allow yourself to unconditionally love a painful emotion, situation, until it's gone, you will be rewarded with, with strength and positive energy. Yeah, that positive energy. And trust me, try it. And you would, where's this positive loving energy coming from? And trust me when I say that's your guides and angels coming in to support you. But first, you have to do it for yourself. And by turning to face what you could not face in the past, you can use your stagnant emotional energy to strongly move your life forward in new and fresh creative ways. I truly enjoyed your reading pile number four. If it resonates, leave me a comment below. And I'm sending you Lots of love and light. Take care.